In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a different type of legend here. You can see here, this is just a very simple legend where we just show the line with the matching text here. But of course, we have to make sure we have some space here and we're going to figure out how we can match the text with it and of course, put it in the right position with the right coordinates. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to create this custom legend for the line chart. So to do this, what we first need is of course to get our default code, which you can find here in chartgs3.com, getting started. So basically this is also in the comment section, or sorry, in the uh, description box, you can find the link in there. Scroll down and just copy this entire chunk of code. And once you have this, and if you want to understand what this code does, please watch this video that explains it all. So then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just paste that in there, and then I'm going to cut this out, put it in here, and next, once I did this, save that, refresh, and now we have a nice basic bar chart. So what I want to do here is to create a legend. And this legend will be on the side, of course, but it will only work with a line chart. So I'm going to convert this into a line chart. Let's say here line. And if I save that, there we are. So what I want to do is to create another data set and eventually make this line thicker. And instead of these hard edges, I want to have this nice elastic effect. So what I'm going to do is just copy all of this. Put a comma here, save that. Then I will just remove this and then just get a color. So what I will say here, I'll just get this green color here, which is the fourth value. And I will do this here as well. And I'll say here this for the background color 0 0.2. So this would be the weekly profits. And this, I will just make this uh, half of whatever it is. So from 12 to 6, 3 to 9, of a, that's 3, and this 4.5. This will be 6, this will be 1.5, and this will be 4.5. So we have our profits here, and of course for our weekly, what is it, sales, I want to have here the, well, we can just get the blue color, that's nice. Put that in there, and put it also in here, but for the border, of course, a solid value. So if I save this now, refresh, all right, we have a thick line, but we don't have yet the tension. So I'm going to put in tension, and I can put the tension here, basically here 0 0.4 but if I do this you can see only one uh, works if we want to do the other one we have to do it here so that is quite redundant so what we can do instead of that is just go here in the options say tension comma and what happens then is every item here will be applied on the same tension so now we have this what I want to do next is of course to create uh, our plugin or well, first of all I will say your plugins and what I want to do here is basically select the legend. And what I want to do here, I will say legend, or sorry, display equals false. Make sure you have a comma here below and then save this, refresh, and now the legend is gone. What I want to do eventually is the legend have you on the side, but basically pinpointing this line instead of having a square uh, or a rectangle box that would represent that color. So what I'm going to do next here is, while well, we have this, what I want to do then is, of course, have some space here at the side. So for that, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put in here, enter, and it will say here, layout, and layout will allow us to create a padding. Then I will say here, padding, and then I will do specifically a padding for the right side here. Let's say 100 pixels should be more than sufficient. So padding here, and I will say, right, 100 save this refresh and now you can see here we have a 100 uh, white space a white space of 100 pixels so what i want to do now is start to work here and get the item here which is the weekly sales should be as a text being displayed here and for this one weekly profits must be shown here as well so for that we're going to start work in the options here just after at the very end we're going to say comma and I'll say plugins because we're going to create a custom plugin and this custom plugin, we can call it a custom legend. So once I have this, I'm going to copy this because this is basically what we call now an object or a constant variable. But this constant variable is an object on itself or on its own. So what I'm going to say here is the custom legend plugin and then I will say a constant custom legend equals and then I'll say ID 
custom legend. All right, so this here is just to get I'm used this because it's of consistency, which is probably the best. But it doesn't matter so much because this is more related to if we have any option fe features, but we won't have them. So we will just focus on this here. So you can ignore this, you can just leave that as it is. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say here the drawing timing, and that will be after draw, meaning we first draw the chart, and at the very end of once the chart has been drawn, at that moment we will draw the text here. So that's the after draw. So what we're going to grab here is three specific values. Oh, before I even do that, I need to do a colon here. And then we have here the three arguments, which is the chart, the arcs for arguments, and the options. And once I did this, because this is a callback feature, I need to use here a function arrow expression. So now what I want to do here is basically use this, and we're going to use what we call a object destructuring. What that really means is, we're going to get a object. We, these are all objects, but we're going to focus on this one here. And this object consists of multiple object variables. And what we want to do is we want to use a shorthand. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say constant. And I'm going to put in here curly braces equal chart. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to get two specific items. One is the meta set which consists of all the items and all the information necessary to draw the line data set. And the other one is the CTX. And the CTX basically means the canvas itself to draw something in the canvas. So once we did this, what we really did is the following. Instead of saying chart dot underscore meta sets, what we now can do is just say meta set. So this is just a shorthand for us. It saves us some time and makes it more concise. So now let's do a console log on this first. So I want to just make sure you understand what we have here by just showing it. Save this, then refresh, open up developer tab, and you can see here we get two arrays. And what are we getting? Well, you can see here the data set with all the information we need. And this is very important. And eventually this underscore data set is the one we will need where we have the background color, the border color, and we have, of course, here the label, and this information will be needed. But of course, we need to loop through this because this is data set one, or uh, sorry, uh, well, this is the index zero, and then we have also index number one it's because we have two data sets here. So we need to grab them step by step. So first of all, before I do anything else, I want to do a ctx.save, meaning saving any variables and information we have here. And now what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to start to loop through this meta set. So basically, remember, the meta set was basically just chart dot this. And now we're going to loop through these two items. So we're going to say here for each. And in this for each, I'm going to put in here a arrow function expression and then here curly braces. And then what I really want is the following. Because with the for each, you can just say here meta, which refers to basically this. But now it loops through these two data sets on our own without indicating, for example, zero or one. Because we need to go through both of them. And what we really want to do here is the following. But we want to get the background color. So what I want to do here just for now, I just say a console long and say meta. If I save this, refresh, you can see here basically nothing has happened. You can see this is line 75, and line 75 is being looped here multiple times because of the animation. But you can see here, nothing really happens, it's exactly the same. So let's start to grab now the specific one, which is the data set underscore or underscore data set. So we're going to say here dot underscore data set, save that, refresh again. There we are, and now we're getting the specific item, which is the weekly sales and the weekly profits and their matching colors. So if I do here now again, and we say here, for example, the text, well, let's click on this. You can see here, let's get the specific label. Save this, refresh. You can see here now it loops through and you get the weekly sales and the weekly profits. All right, so this would mean that we can now start to draw something. So what I want to do here now, just to start with, I'm going to say here a ctx.font. This is basically a canvas feature. And in this canvas feature, I'm going to now define the text. So what I want is here a bolder text. Then we say here a uh, 12, a font size of 12 pixels and then font family 
Ariel. Once I did this, the next thing what I want to do here is select what is the text we want. Well, you probably figured out here, we extracted that. So if I do here CTX, and then I'm going to say fill text. And the fill text consists of three specific variables, which is the text itself, what is the text we're going to write, and then here the position, and we can call it the X, X position, which is basically based on left how many pixels to the right, and then we have another one is the Y position, which would position, make sure you spell it correctly, and the Y position refers to how many pixels are we going down. So what we really need to do here now is to figure out how can we get this exact position here. All right, so first of all, because we have this, I just want to grab this and then just start putting here. And then what I will say here, I will just say here, uh, let's say seven, well, not 700, maybe 400 by 400. I'm just doing something here, refresh. And all right, so you can see here it's being filled. The text did it do anything? Not yet. Uh, so what we're going to do here? Let's double check here why it is not showing. We have the font, and of course I realize the reason why is we don't have any color. So I'm going to say here fill style, and I'm going to just get a color. Right now I'm going to get it as black. If I save this now, we should have now something. All right, interesting. It's not showing yet. So let's start to look what's going on here. All right, so after checking why is it not working, I find the answer and the answer is very logical because we have this here 400 by 400, which is fine, but we have one issue. If I select this inspector element here, our height is only 350 pixels. So not 400, meaning that it's going out of the canvas. So if I would change this to 200 pixels and save this and refresh, there we are. So you can see you now it starts to work, but of course they're on top of each other. So let's first work on the color because this color here now is quite simple to do. To do this, all we need to do here is basically in a data set here again, let's refresh this. You can see here, we can just grab here the border color and then we would, we would have the nice colors. If I would do this, you know, refresh, we get here the colors, all right. So then I want to go back here, just grab this and just say here, that's our border color, save that. All right, so we get the colors here and you might notice it, but maybe not where's, uh, if they are blue and green. However, you might see it here. Anyway, the reason why it's hard to see, of course, right now is because we're on top of each other. We need to now start to get the position. So how do we get the position accordingly? Well, for that, we need, again, here in the meta, we're going to work on it. And let's go back here to meta, to the original meta here. Save this, refresh open up this and then we're going to search for the information and what I need here is basically the meta and then we're going to search for the data uh, that's this one here you can see here what we get here is the exact position of every one of these but what do I need is the following I need to get the last one because the last one is matching here you can see this is the last one that is matching everything else here like this one here it starts at 27 which is correct because it's very top here maybe there's some white space of 27 pixels here so that's why it's here and you can see here it starts also you can see here you get the x and the y coordinate so the y coordinate or the x coordinate is based on how much sorry that's from this one here how much to the to the right so in total we're going 27 pixels to the right from from the x and then the Y is, of course, the vertical. So that would mean here for the Y, we're going about 10 pixels down. So that's it. But what we need to do here is just only get this one here. So we need to grab here the last value. So how do we do this? Well, let's look at where we are. So it's in the data. So I'm going to grab here the data. And we're going to figure out how to get the last value in here. So if I do this and save that, we get now all of these items, but now I want to only extract the last one here. To do that, we need to use a feature or basically a command. So basically we want to have this number six. If I do this, we will get here the specific one, which is number six, which is fine. But of course I cannot hard code this. That will mean that I need to soft code this. To soft code this, all we need to do is the following. I'm going to copy this. 
and I'm going to say here, and basically what I want to do is exactly the same in the metadata, but we say dot length. If I do a dot length, you save that refresh, you get seven. But remember, six is the max, y is it then seven, because the length calculates uh, every element. Well, an array, it counts from zero, at least in JavaScript, it's zero based calculation, so it start with zero, or zero based counting, so it start with zero up to six. So that would mean, and that's why you can see if I save this here, refresh, you will see here, the length is seven, but the element, the last element is six. So what I need to do here, dot length minus one. If I save that, we will grab here now, number six. So that would mean that this here can be now put in there. So once I have this, we can now just do a console log on here, save that, refresh. And then if we do that, what we have more is the following. We get now everything of the six, but we need now the x and the y value. This is important because this here, remember, this was the y position, and this is the, or sorry, the x position, and this is the y position. So that would mean that these two values are essential for us. So what I'm going to do here is we say here dot x. If I do this, refresh, all right, the x position, all right. You get this error here because of these values doesn't exist yet. So don't worry. Let's put this here all back on 200. And then what I want to do now for the X position, we can just put that in here. If I do this, save that, refresh, you can see here now, we are getting on the right position here at the very end, basically from left to right. What I would say here, you can see here, we're too close on the line. I would say here, let's put in at least three pixels extra or, well, maybe six pixels or, actually to push it more to the right side. So I'm going to say here the following, plus six, and that's it. If I do this, there you are, that looks slightly better. Now what we need to do is exactly the same for the Y position here. To do that, basically we can just say here Y, we get this and then we get all of this. All right, so well, this doesn't mean anything until you see it in here. So we do this, there we are. So now we get this, but you can see here, we're just in the corner here. Uh, we could probably push this down or maybe, well, let's see if we would do baseline here. Uh, CTX, and then we say text baseline equals middle. Let's see if this works or else we can push it down with some pixels. If we save that, refresh. Uh, well, it doesn't really work successfully here. Then I would, oh, maybe I need to do baseline with small l, sorry. There you are. And that here helps us to push it in the center here so we don't have to play around down here in the pixels. And this is basically now your own legend. Of course, there's no unclick functionality on that, but I will ignore that because basically if you have like this, maybe you just want to show it like that. And this is another way how you can play around with the legend features. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to do something uh, more interactive like a hoover effect that will uh, widen or increase the size of this, I would highly recommend to check out this one on how to change the line thickness on hoover on a line chart in chart.js, which is also a quite nice interactive way of displaying your charts.